The Bible says this in Proverbs chapter 4. It says that wisdom is supreme. So acquire wisdom and whatever you may acquire, gain understanding. And we're talking about the wisdom of God, how it's contrary to the wisdom of the world, how when the world looks at what we do, they consider it foolishness. The Bible says when they see it, they consider it foolishness, but the wisdom of heaven is ultimately supreme. And so as we look at this, you know, I was thinking about Father's Day. We're celebrating men today. Uh, can we, and throughout the message today, instead of an amen, we'll just do ah, 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 like some grunts. All right. So, um, you know, what I was thinking about, I was thinking about this morning, um, my dad, um, there were times where he would put on different shows and uh, he'd show us, you know, something maybe he watched. And I remember one of the classics that I still enjoy today. How many remember the Three Stooges? I remember, you remember that? Uh, And and, uh, some of them, and and how many know that the the Three Stooges were, come on, can anybody name them? Larry Curley and Moe, and then the other one that came around later, you know, we had him too. And, and, you know, I was thinking about those guys could have used some wisdom, you know what I mean? And I was thinking about, you know, going through life, if we're not careful, uh, we'll just do things because the world told us to do it that way, or we'll just do things because that's what we think in and of ourselves. But how many know there is a manual that God gave us? Amen. God says this in Isaiah 55, he says, my thoughts are higher than your thoughts thoughts. My ways are higher than your ways. And so, you know, the the quickest way to wisdom, the pathway of wisdom is knowing what God says, knowing God's word about life. This is the instruction manual. You know, everything that we, we desire in this life, it can come about by the manifestation of the word of God. This word reigns supreme. It doesn't matter what happens in the world. It doesn't matter what people might say. I've heard people say, well, you know, the Bible's a little bit outdated and we just need to uh, uh, to update it according to the times and we need to change what it says no the word of God never changes the Bible says the flower fades the grass withers but the word of the Lord it endures forever and when if we're going to walk in divine wisdom we've got to make the word of God the highest priority in our lives we've got to adhere ourselves to it Deuteronomy 28 1 says it like this If you fully obey these words, these decrees I give to you this day, then I will set you high above the nations of the world. Turn to someone and tell them I'm destined for greatness. You are. Greatness is upon your life. Christ said that he he saw us like a city set on a hill. Think about this. You were born, you are born of God. They, you know, there isn't a human being, there isn't a, a person in the natural that can compete with the race of people of who we are. We are a royal priesthood, a holy nation of people. We are a different breed of people. Why? Because we're not of ourselves. We've been born of a new nature. We have a new name written down in glory. We have God's spirit living on the inside of us. We might be in this world, but we're not of the same kind. We are a people born of God. And what is born of God, the Bible says it over comes the world how many overcomers do we have in this place today amen hallelujah and wisdom is supreme the bible says and talks about the principle today that what you what you in your own mind what you are meditating on will ultimately manifest in your life Let me say that again. What you're meditating on and where your mind is will ultimately manifest in your life. How many of you ever met somebody, you know, uh, maybe they're always in a bad mood. They're always looking to argue with somebody or they're always looking to, to fight or, or, or maybe they're just difficult people, you know, and they're always looking to, how many know like what you're looking for will be drawn to you. If you're looking and you like to argue with people, you're going to find somebody else just like you. Congratulations. You know what I mean? You two just keep arguing with each other. 
Why? Because what you meditate on and what your human nature is bent on will be attracted to you. But I'm so thankful today that when you hand your life over to Jesus Christ, it's a new way of living. The Bible says the old is gone and the new has come. But I want to talk to you this morning about how we have to have the mind of Christ. And this mind of Christ that we had now. This mind, that was a little bit creepy, wasn't it? <laughs> this mind of Christ that we had today. <laughs> See, we're in this world, and what happens is if we're not careful, the mindsets of the world can become our way of thinking. The mindsets of what God has called us, and this thing's kind of creeping me out. I'm going to make it look at that way, all right? <laughs> The mindsets of the world can slowly creep in and begin to reprogram the way we think. You know, here's what, here's what I think. So many times in our life, there are people that are saved. We've been talking about the spirit of God living on the inside of us and how we're three-part beings. We are spirit, soul, and body. So we all have a body, we all have a soul, and we all have a spirit that once we're born of God, the spirit of God comes and lives on the inside of us. Before Christ, we are, man's spirit is dead and has no ability to communicate with God. But once we're born again, that's how we commune with God is in our spirit. And what happens is when you are born of God, born again, you come into a new way of living. But here's the key. There are many people that are saved but have never renewed their mind off of the old pattern and the old way of living for example you'll hear people say things like well you know I just couldn't control myself well you know that's not what God's word says the Bible says this that the fruits of the spirit one of them is self-control you hear people say things like well you know I just that's the way I was raised well you don't know I'm Irish or I'm Scottish or that's the way I respond because I'm of this race or I come from this kind of people or I just like to do this I, you know, sometimes I lie or sometimes I cheat and it's because of this or sometimes I get angry and I just give people a piece of my mind. And you hear all these phrases, but can I tell you, they are nowhere found in the new mind of Christ. Because if you're not careful, you can be saved and going to heaven and still have a mindset that is of this world. And if you do that, you will not produce the life that God has for you. Why? Because the Bible talks about it. Well, let's read. I'll set this guy right here. Let's read Romans chapter 8 and verse 5 for a moment. It talks about two mindsets, and you're going to have one or the other. And if you're not careful, what you'll have is a mixture in your life that you need to purify. And the only way to purify, I'm getting ahead of myself, what the mixture of the world is by the pure word of God. Hallelujah. That's why we're here this morning. That's why we come into this house. That's why we show up and it matters every Sunday to be committed in the house of God. To say, God, I'm showing up. Why? Because when the word of God is going forth, the Bible says it's alive. It's active. There's something supernatural happening in this place today. That as I'm speaking the word of God, the Holy Spirit's breathing life upon you. The Holy Spirit's renewing your mind. Say, I don't have to live like that. I don't have to act like that. I don't have to be. I can have the mind of Christ. And here's what it says. There's two mindsets. And let's read about it. Romans 8, 5, for those who are living according to the flesh, set their minds on the things of the flesh, which gratify their body. Do you see this three part beings? Their mind is not renewed. So they looking to just gratify their flesh. What can I have for me? What can I do for me? But those who are living according to God's spirit, set their minds on his will and his purposes. Now the mind of the flesh is death both now and forevermore, because the mind of the flesh, it will always pursue sin. It will always pursue the wrong path. Jesus said, the heart, the heart without God above all things is wicked. Why? Because what you meditate on will manifest in your life. And the natural mind, I mean, you, you watch it from a young age. Kids, you know, you go in that nursery now. There's kids taking things off people. That room is as unsaved in that other room as, it, as any room in this place. Now, you know, beating the kid over the head. I mean, you get arrested for the stuff they do in that nursery. 
you know, pushing the kid over. I mean, that, you know, we see parents leaving right now to go get their kids. <laughs> but that's why we have referees in there. Some of you call them children's workers or children's ministers. But part of their job is refereeing, especially the younger age. Why? Because human nature, you're born into this world, and you, you want what's mine. Mine, mine, mine. You know, it's like one of the first, kids, uh, first words a kid learns. Mine, mine, you know. Mine, 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 mine. You know what I mean? It's like you don't have to. They, it's, a, it's a mindset that has to be renewed and has to be worked on. And here's the thing. It's not a one-time renewal. You know why? Because we're in the world. Here's what I want you to see. God wants you to have a mindset. But what happens is it, when you're in the world that long, even when you get saved, you still, even after you're saved, you have a responsibility to daily renew your mind. Why? Because when you're in the world, what happens? The world's going to, if you're not renewing it, the world's stains and its way of thinking start getting on you and the way of, of what God wants to do in your life. And now you don't have the mind of Christ. You've been impacted and you are now have a mindset that's been warped. Why? Because the sinful nature in and of itself, you don't have, to, like I said, you don't have to teach people to do the wrong things. Why? Because human nature apart from God is under a curse and wants to go towards evil desires. That's why people can't control themselves. I just, I, you know, I keep doing that. I don't want to do it. Have you ever met somebody that doesn't know God? I have this addiction in my life and I can't stop. Why? Because sin has a power to it, just like righteousness has a power to it. When people that are bound by sin cannot control themselves because of, uh, sin is a power. That's why he says this, when you come to Christ, the stronghold of sin has been broken over you and sin no longer has dominion over you. How many thankful today? We are not under the dominion of sin. We are under the dominion of God and his righteousness. And so what we have is we have people that are going around, even well, well-meaning believers that are going around with mindsets that have stained their way of thinking and it's not producing the lifestyle they want. How many remember, we talked about it last week, Daniel. He lived in Babylon, but he was not of, he did not act like them. He did not follow their customs in the way that they told him. Matter of fact, the Bible says he stood up and he had a conviction of what was righteous and what was holy and what God's word says. And you know what happened? God raised him to the top. Why? Because Deuteronomy says, it, it says it like this. If you will fully obey, then God will set you high above the nations of the world. This book will cause your life to rise. It will cause you to be blessed. It will cause you to be protected. God said it like this. I'll be your shield and your very great reward. It pays to serve God. All oh, the blessings of those that fear him. All oh, the blessing of the Lord. It'll make a man rich and add no sorrow to it. You'll have blessing in every area. And as long as wisdom is in your life, it will protect you. It will promote you. And this book is full of the wisdom of heaven. How many remember Solomon? We talked about him last week. He could ask for anything in the world. And what did he ask for? He asked for wisdom. Why? Because wisdom will bless and promote you and protect you. But he didn't operate in wisdom in his latter years. Matter of fact, he started allowing the wisdom and how he started. How many know? You know, it doesn't matter if you start well, if you don't finish well. And so he didn't finish well. Why? Because he aborted wisdom and he aborted what God said about marrying foreign women that would take his heart away from the Lord. Why? Because the wisdom that promoted him, he, he deviated from it when it came to that area of his life. 
Be careful areas of your life where you have wrong mindsets because the Bible says you can develop strongholds and wrong patterns of thinking in your mind that are exalted against the knowledge of Christ. Some of you are here today and maybe you don't believe that God wants to bless your life and God wants to prosper you. That's a stronghold that is contrary to what God says. Some of you are here today and maybe you don't believe God wants to heal you and healing is not for us. That's a wrong way of thinking that will not produce the life of God in you. Some of you here today, and maybe you just think, oh, it's always going to be this way. Nothing's ever working out for me. That is a mindset of a victim. See, there's mindsets in this world that will try to get themselves attached and stain your way of thinking. Why? Because the world wants you to look just like it looks. It wants, we are in this world. And here's what happens. If you're not daily renewing your mind, it slowly changes who you are. And this mindset he speaks of in Romans 8, he says, the mind of the flesh is death. It goes after and is contrary to what God wants. It pursues sins, sin. But the mind of God's of the Spirit is life and peace. For spiritual well-being comes from walking with God. The mind of the flesh is hostile to God. It doesn't submit itself to God's word. And those who are of the flesh cannot please God. What was he saying? I love this. He said, you will keep those in perfect peace whose mind is stead, steadfast upon you. Amen. What a, he's saying life and peace comes from a mind of Christ. Amen. People that are, how many know there's a lot of people out of their mind today? Yeah. Come on, they're everywhere. Don't look to your neighbor right now, all right? Keep your eyes straight forward even if they're sitting right there next to you. All right? And so people are out of their mind. People uh, now today are are literally, they're losing their minds. Have you ever seen the effects of sin on people? They have no control. It completely takes any dignity away from them, any honor stripped from them. Case in point, have you ever seen somebody that maybe they have some type of deficiency? Maybe they're blind, but they can brilliantly use their minds still. And make an impact in the world. And we've seen people to do that. People with it, disabilities. You know, somebody that's crippled or lame. Use their mind to brilliantly make an impact on the world today. And we've seen hundreds of thousands of people that maybe they have a disability in one area. But there's one area that I've never seen someone overcome. I've never seen someone lose their mind or go mad in their mind and make an impact on the world. Why? Because the mind is important. Because the mind is a place that is a center to feed the things of God. See, the mind determines what's in my heart. The mind determines the way I live. See, when the thought comes to me that's contrary to what God says, if I don't, if I don't cast it down, then it's becoming a part of who I am. If I don't renew my mind, I'm starting to look like the world that I'm in. The dust of Egypt is getting on you every day, but it's your choice whether you wash it off or you allow it to remain we are in this world passing through but that dust of Egypt it doesn't become a part of who we are no we wash it through with the water of the word of God today the word is going for today it's renewing our minds it's renewing our attitudes it's dividing between what is soulish and what is spirit what is life everlasting and what will produce death Come on, how many want the pathway of life? Amen. The pathway of peace is found in the mind that pleases the spirit. That's the wisdom of God. He said life and peace will be for those that please the Lord. But the mind that is carnal will produce death. I want that. I just want this. It's pursuing. And then what happens? The fruit, the wages of sin is death. It's every time. There is a payment for sin, and it's ultimately death and destruction. That's why when you do it contrary to God's word, it brings harm to you. God's telling you not to sin because it hurts you. It'll, it'll mess up your life. And when you do it his ways, you can walk in a pathway of wisdom where you don't have to have the same pitfalls as the world. 
I said, you don't have to have the same pitfalls. You don't have to have the same heartbreak as the world. There are a lot of things and people that live in this world that experience heartbreak, and it is not because it's the will of God. It's because it's a wisdom problem. Do you know in Isaiah 11, it talks about six characteristics of God. Spirit of wisdom, might, counsel, the fear of the Lord, which is the beginning of wisdom, and knowledge. Five out of the six, the sixth one is might, he talks about. Five out of six speak to the mind. What, what is it? So many times, thank God for the, the power of God. But so many people's problems are not in the power of God operating. It's in the wisdom of God operating in your life. Because there's a wisdom problem. Because you don't know the mind and the will of God. That's why he said in, in Romans 12, 1 and 2. Present yourselves. That's the fear of God. Remember we talked about that last week for those of you who weren't here. The fear of God is the beginning or the access point of wisdom. First, salvation. Then I understand. Second, the fear of God. What is the fear of God? It is living in reverent awe of Him. I'm not afraid of Him like I'm running from Him. I live in a fear that He's holy to me. That He's righteous to me. He says to love what is righteous and hate what is evil why because the moment you don't hate what is evil you begin to entertain what is evil and you begin to develop it as a mindset that mindset will ultimately take you down a path that leads to destruction and you've got to watch out the bible says it's the little foxes that spoil the whole vineyard it's the little things oh you know what how about he just plants it, just like the word of God is going forth and it's seed in your heart. He'll plant a little negative thought, maybe a negative attitude. Maybe it's unforgiveness. Maybe it's anger. Maybe it's bitterness. Maybe it's resent. Maybe it's greed. Maybe it's pride. He'll put a little, maybe it's lust. He'll put a little plant of a little seed in you. And then what happens is if you're not careful, your mind will feed it. See, your mind is the gateway to the heart. Your mind is the gateway to the heart. What you meditate on will ultimately manifest. And Proverbs says it like this. As a man thinks, so he will become. As a man thinks in his heart, so he becomes. These men that changed the world, that turned the world upside down. Think about this. Here's what they said about them. They said these men were the finest scholars that Israel has ever seen. Nope. They said these men were unlearned, ordinary men. Amen. But they turned the world upside down. Why? Because the wisdom of men is even superior to the highest wisdom. And I'm not, I'm not certainly against education. We're launching a school of ministry to educate thing, people in the things and the wisdom of God. But I'm saying, what he was saying is these men would outwit even the greatest minds of Israel. Think about it. They were always trying to trap Jesus. You remember the stories? Hey, Jesus, they knew the law. They said, Jesus, this woman committed adultery. The, the law says to stone her. Jesus knew he couldn't speak against the law. But they put him in a trap where now if he spoke against the law, they could condemn him. If he, if he said the woman could, would die, should die, then they could condemn him as well. They put him in a trap. But wisdom comes from the spirit of the living God. Because the Holy Spirit is the spirit of wisdom that Paul speaks of. He said, I pray that God will give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation. See, the more wisdom you walk in, the more light you walk in. I can only go as far as the light that is in front of me if the the room is dark and there's a pathway that i don't know of i can only go as far as the illumination in front of me the bible says it like this his lamp his word is a lamp to my feet it's a light to my path and what god's word does is it illuminates the pathway that leads to blessing it keeps me from the pathway of destruction it keeps me out of a place where i'm worrying where i've been in fear 
fear. Why? Because when I see it in the Word, I realize I'm a child of the Most High God. Why would I fear anything in this world? I fear God. It's the beginning of wisdom. I'm not after the approval or of men. I don't fear men when you fear God. And when you fear God, then nothing in this world can refrain you because your mindset has been renewed. That's why when they hated Jesus, they tried to trap him. He just said, you know what? The Bible says he took a moment and the spirit of God, he wrote something in the ground. And then he said, he who is without sin, go ahead and cast the first stone. Boom. Wisdom blew right up in their face. They're like, man, crap. He got us again. Walked away. Why? Wisdom that was not of the world. Oh, we'll get him on this one. Hey, uh, Jesus, do you pay taxes to Caesar? They're going to get him again, they thought. He said, let me see one of those coins. He said, who is it on there? They said, Caesar. He said, well, give to Caesar what is Caesar's and to what God is, would be God's. And the Bible says, then they walked away. What? The wisdom he operated off of. Stephen in Acts chapter 6, in one whole chapter, gives an amazing message, one of the best messages preached on the summary of the Old Testament into the New Testament. By the way, and the Bible says he operated in such wisdom that it angered them because he had a superior wisdom. That's the wisdom that we have access to. I want you, why? You need to hear that because it's yours. Yes. See, if you don't hear that, well, you know, Jesus out with it. And I'm not talking about just being argumentative. Come on. Somebody's like, ooh, I can get this so I can win even more arguments, you know, with my spouse. Yeah, you're wrong. <laughs> You've already lost if you want to win that bad. Here, here's the thing he was saying. He was saying, look, there is a superior wisdom. He said, these, why, these, these unlearned men are here. But they, they took note that these men had been with Jesus. They had been with Jesus long enough that it started changing the way they thought. Do you remember when Jesus told them? They, Jesus, now, now these guys, these guys should encourage you, these disciples. I mean, they were not the sharpest tools in the shed. Okay, we'll just say it like that. The elevator didn't go all the way to the top floor, all right? Because Jesus just performed this miracle of feeding 5,000 people. They get in the boat, and Jesus says, beware of the unleavened bread. The yeast, the, the works through the mind, because just a little bit of yeast can work its way through the whole dough and impact the whole thing. Be aware of the yeast of the Pharisees. And you know what they say? They said, you know what, Jesus? We forgot the bread. Who was supposed to bring the bread? They started arguing about bread. And Jesus like, I just fed you. Did you not? He said, are your hearts and minds still so dull? Why? Because they constantly with their mindsets were refraining him from the supernatural to be produced in their lives. Didn't you just see what I did? Why? Because when you have the mind of Christ, it takes off every hindrance. That's why when I preach the word, you can have the wisdom of Daniel, of Solomon. You can have the mind of Christ. When you start projecting and speaking that, what's going to happen? The wisdom of God is going to begin to touch your life. Why? Because it's an illumination now that I am made to be like a star in the sky. I am made to be like a city on a hill to reflect the greatness of God. What does the devil want to do? He wants to rob people of their dignity and honor. Why? Because he can't get at God. So what's he going to get at? He's going to get at the creation. Make, strip them. But when you operate in wisdom, hallelujah, fear can't touch my life anxiety and worry have no place in my life why about as i know who i am in the christ i'm seated with him in, in heavenly places i can't is ripped out of my vocabulary i uh, because i can do all things through christ who strengthens me it'll never happen it's not in my vocabulary because he is a god of the impossible he's my provision he's my provider he's my healer if he said it that settles it that is the wisdom of god and it's so superior to the things in my life it doesn't matter what happened before 
It doesn't matter the things you didn't see before. What happens is that word will never change. But the Bible says it like this. In Romans chapter 12, he says it like this. Brothers and sisters, present yourselves as living sacrifices. He said, don't be conformed any longer to the world and its customs. Because it's looking to change you. It's looking to get you to look just like it does it wants to get you jesus in john 13 he went to wash the disciples feet why because they had dust they come in now here's the thing he washed their feet and then he begins to speak of a spiritual truth he says this he said you are all washed but one of you is not clean there is still one of you that's not clean and that the bible said he spoke of Judas in John 15 3 he said my word my word has made you clean he said the word I've been speaking over you has literally transformed your mind into the mind of Christ a new way of thinking so the mind of Christ we have to renew it Ephesians 5 it says it like this that husbands just speak or read the word of God over your wife and children because it's like the water of God renewing the mind. And here's what, here's what we, 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 we got to know. Is as we're walking through the world, the dust of the world, if you're not careful. How many know like dust is not part of who you are? Unless like you don't bath for a really long time. Come on. You know how many remember like whether it was like you or, or maybe you had a kid that like didn't like the bath. And you always had to tell them like, hey, go get a bath buddy you stink like when's when's your last time you got a bath well it's been a few days get a bath why because the stink became part of who they are we got a lot of christians walking around with stinking thinking and you could just smell it that attitude that negativity that criticism what that argument, that anger, that criticalness. You can just see it and it's permeating off them. Why? Because they allowed a trace of the world to impact their mindset. But here's what he said. He said, I want you to get the word of God upon you. Because the word, my word over your life will, will be like a water that even though the dust may be around you, there's something potent. There's something powerful that if you get the mind of Christ upon you, you keep pouring it over you. You keep pouring. You keep meditating on the word. You keep becoming. And what happens is the effects of the world will start. They start being stripped off your mind. And then what happens? The thing that you thought were so impossible now you're starting to think like God about it now all of a sudden what was sent to stain your way of thinking think about the things the devil wants to shame you he wants shame on your mind so you're not confident in who God's called you to be what does he want he wants you insecure about who you are so then you got to look to feed that insecurity because now that insecurity became a stronghold in your mind. And now you're looking for, for somebody else to feed the insecurity in you. Somebody on social media trying to feed, you know, oh, well, you know, I only got this many likes. I only got this. Come on. We're, we're taking our cues from the world. We're feeding wrong mindsets with wrong things. Thinking that somehow that's going to end up as a result of, of fulfilling our lives. It's an improper mindset. See, we are not victims in this world. We have all been through some stuff. We've all been through, you know, trials and tribulations. And, and some of you have been through some hell. Some of you have been through some difficult things in your life. But here's the thing. With the renewal of the mind, God never will make you a victim. Victims are not people that, that, that you become a victim by your lack of understanding of who you really are in the Christ. Because you can walk through some things and things not attach and stain you. You can walk through some stuff and it not become a part of who you are. 
See, you can, you can walk through some stuff and you say, you know what? I'm not a victim. I know who I am in the Christ. The word of God says I'm more than enough. The word of God, I just keep washing it off. And the world just tries to keep putting it on. That's not who you are. And the word of God said, this is who you are. I know who you are in the Christ. You can't, it can't get, come on. Somebody's head's coming up <laughs> to another. You just went to another level. Son, it's right there. On all those people. It's a good job. And now you're changing levels. What happens? Man, that was great. You just start changing levels. Then you realize they can't even put their stuff on me anymore. Because I'm seated with Christ. They're trying to put their junk on me. And I just changed levels. They're trying to they're trying to inform me of who I am, but I've already been informed of who I am. They're trying to tell me what I can do, but I, I'm telling you it's too late. I'm not hanging out in your little cesspool. I'm not hanging out in your little mindsets that are of this world. You can keep projecting as much as you want, and the world will. They'll project you as a victim. They'll project you as not enough. They'll project you as not qualified. But I'm telling you, there is a wisdom that is not of this world that will qualify you. Hallelujah. There is a spirit of the living God that I have the mind of Christ now. I am a new creation in the Christ. The old is gone and the new is come. I know who I am. I know of God. There's mindsets that you've exalted above the Word of God about how you can. Some of you deal with insecurity so bad that if someone doesn't affirm you in one day, it cracks, it, it ruins your whole day. I'm telling you, once you get the approval of heaven, you could care less what men think about you. You don't need their approval. Paul said, am I, am I seeking man's approval or am I seeking God's? Love me or hate me. You can't move me. I know who I am. I know whose I am. I know what he said about me. And I'm just going to be who my father says I'll be. And I love you. Even if you don't like me, I love you. Because I'm free. And once I'm free of me, I can be free of you. Some of you never got freed. Some of you here today and your mindset is robbing you of peace and joy. Your mindset today is crippling you. Anxiety, worry, insecurity, fear. And the devil's having a heyday in your mind. Yeah, you're saved. Yeah, you're going to heaven. But you're being tormented in your mind. But there is a wisdom that is supreme. That once you know what God says, that settles it. And then Romans 12, 2 says, and then you'll know the will of God. Some of you have been in confusion and chaos. And that's all that's around your life. If there's chaos and confusion all around you, it's because there's mindsets that are unstable. And unstable mindsets can only be settled by the Word of God. Then you know the will of God. And if you're here today, and maybe you're battling those things. God's not condemning you. I'm not telling you that to make you feel bad. Hear my heart today. If you're battling insecurity, God loves you. He's not condemning you. If you're battling fear and worry, anxiety, God's not condemning you today. But God is saying this. If you'll exchange that way of thinking for a new way of thinking. That he said in his word that he hasn't given us a spirit of fear. But of love, power, and what? A sound mind. A sound mind is the result 
of pleasing the Lord. Troubled minds are a result of those that disregard this word. And if you're here today and you want to surrender, every head bow, every eye closed, and there's areas in your mind that you know you need to surrender to Jesus Christ, and you're battling them today, I'm telling you, God will give grace to the humble. And if you have a mindset you want to surrender today, I just want you to give it to the Lord. I just want you to lift your hand and say, today I want to surrender a mindset that's keeping me down, that's holding me back. Amen. Amen. There's mindsets. So, why? Because the devil has tricks. The devil is throwing different things at everybody. Somebody, it might be, uh, you know, insecurity. Another person, it might be pride. Another person, it might be lust of the flesh. Whatever it might be. The enemy, you've got to unsee that mindset, that thought. You've got to tear it down with the word today. As hands are going up all over this place today, you can raise it up, put it right back down. Amen, amen. But today is a new day. We're going to walk in what's supreme. Father, for every hand that's lifted today, you, by the power of your spirit, I ask you to go into their hearts. I I ask you to go into their minds that with the power of the Holy Ghost, they begin to uproot that thought. They would tear it down and they would replace it with the word of God. We're not just tearing down. We're uprooting it and then we're establishing a new way of thinking today in the mighty name of Jesus. That stronghold in their mind is broken today by the power of your spirit and your word. And they'll never be the same from this day on. Insecurity goes. Fear and anxiety goes. Worry goes. Peace of mind. Is the position of the mind of Christ. Why? Because the mind of the spirit produces life and peace. If anxiety, fear, and worry are a part of your life, it's because you're not accessing what God has intended for you. But today's a new day and you're full of knowledge. Last thing I want to say, if you're here today and you don't know Jesus Christ, make this the greatest Father's Day ever by having a Heavenly Father come into your life that loves you. He's the greatest Father you could ever know. And any good Father is only good because He's modeled after the Heavenly Father. If there's anything good in us men, it is because it's a heavenly father that shined through us. And he will receive all the glory. And if you need to make him your father today, you don't know him, you don't have a relationship. Every head bow, every eye close, and you want to give your life, you want to surrender. Or maybe recommit your life to Jesus Christ. I want you just to slip your hand up high, put it right back down. Today, I want to receive Jesus Christ in my life. I see your hand in the back. Anybody else? You say, today is my day. Amen. Is there anybody else? Hands going up all over the place today. I want to make God my father. I want to know heaven is my home. Before we close, is there one more? You say, today is my day. For every hand hand that went up today, you're going to pray this from your heart. Say it with me. Say, heavenly father, thank you for your son, Jesus. Thank you that he died and took my place. I ask you to forgive me of my sin. Come into my heart. Make me new. From now on, I live for you. Fill me with your spirit now. In Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen.